Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome to the paint itself. So if you like interior decorating like I do, you've probably pinned thousands of images off of Pinterest and you've probably been stalking certain Instagram accounts for inspiration for your home. Now you may have the same problem. Some of the things that I pin, I know I will never be able to afford. Well, I shouldn't say never. The odds are I'll never be able to afford those pieces. Cabinets that cost in the tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes more. European antiques that have these amazing finishes, one of a kind pieces. I love so many different things. And then I also like very casual, easy, easy to acquire decor pieces as well. So I like to mix everything. But the things that inspire me are usually things that are slightly out of reach. Now our home is very modest. We don't have a need for those amazing pieces anyway. Most of them are going to be too large in scale to fit in a smaller home like we live in. So I'm looking for just the inspiration from the things that I find on Pinterest or even from my own mind. I find myself very obsessed with the finishes that are on French antiques or things that have been sitting out in the garden for years and years and years. I love all of those finishes and I'm trying to create several of them throughout my home in different rooms on different items. So this project ended up taking me several days and many hours. It was definitely a labor of love. Let's get started. I really hope you like the end result. In today's video, I'm going to share how I transformed this plain black cabinet into a one-of-a-kind piece for my guest room makeover. A lot of you suggested that I should keep the cabinet solid black and just touch up the paint. And some of you suggested that I paint it like I painted the bed. And others suggested painting it like the light fixture. And some of you suggested that I paint the cabinet lavender, cream, or green, like the colors in the curtain panels. So I referred back to my inspiration painting to make sure that I ended up with a finish that would bring that vibe into the guest room, even though that particular painting would not be hanging in that room. To start this transformation, I knew that I wanted quite a bit of texture and character, so I decided to apply joint compound just like I did on the terracotta pots in a previous video. Please keep in mind that this cabinet is not going in a high traffic, high use area. Now, as you probably already know, you can add texture with just paint. However, I really wanted more dimension. After wiping the cabinet down with crud cutter gloss off like I always do, I took regular joint compound and a chip brush and a putty knife and applied the product in all different directions. This process can be modified for your own personal tastes. You can use whatever tools you prefer and create whatever texture works best for your style. I ended up applying the product with the brush on the curved areas and using the putty knife on flat surfaces and a combination of both. So the idea here is to just create the look of what would have been decades and decades of chipping paints and then that will be the foundation of the next paint application that I'm about to apply.
You don't want a lot of peaks in the product. If you do have peaks, you can knock them down with the putty knife or a wet paper towel after the product has started to set up. You don't want to do this when the product is still wet or you don't want to have your paper towel too sopping wet because it will remove the product. Here is the cabinet completely textured and ready for paint. I really love all French country colors, and one that I'm always drawn to is like an ochre yellow. So I took Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint in the color Queen Bee, and I added her color in Krenlin, and then I added some flat brown paint to dull the color just a little bit, and came up with this color for my base coat. I used a chip brush to base coat the entire piece, being sure to get in most of the crevices, but not 100%. And here is the cabinet with the ochre yellow base coat. Next, I decided to add a muddy brown color in the creases and areas around the doors and trim. I then used a wet rag and distressed the entire cabinet to blend the colors a little bit and allow the original black paint to show through. As you can see here, the right side has been distressed and the left side has not. Now at this point, I'm really starting to like the look. So next, I decided to add highlights, so I mixed up a lighter yellow and applied the paint on the raised areas for extra dimension. The cabinet was just looking too yellow, and I love yellow, but after looking at it in the room with the other elements, I decided that maybe I wanted a more neutral color that would work throughout all the seasons of the year. So I tried to tone it down with a color called Epic by Valspar that was basically a darker version of the wall color, but still allow the yellow to show through.
not feeling it. So this is the part in the process that you're going to think I've lost my mind. This time I decided I wanted a vintage green color. So I painted on a layer of green paint that I mixed up using paints that I had on hand and I covered the entire piece. To add lowlights to the piece, I mixed up a darker vintage green. And for highlights, I mixed up and applied a lighter green. Okay, this next step can be done in two ways. If you like the paint colors as they are when you get to this stage, that's great. Seal it with a polyacrylic top coat and you're done. Or if you want the colors as they are, but would like an antiqued look, add the glaze over the top coat so that it only goes into the recessed areas. For me, I wanted all the paint to be darkened as well as leaving glaze in the recessed areas. So I applied my favorite glaze, Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze in Java Brown to the entire outside surface. In my opinion, I love applying glaze because I think it really brings the paint finish to life and it adds warmth and richness to any piece that you apply it to. Now, while it may seem like I wasted a lot of time and pain on the first few layers, <laughs> it actually helped create the finished look because those ochre yellows and the buttery yellows are still there and they're peeking through just a little bit. This shelf originally had a glass insert, but I decided to just replace it with wood underlayment and paint it the chiffon cream color like I did the rest of the interior. For the inside of the doors, I used the same shades of green, but I kept it simple. I didn't apply any texture or glaze. On the inside of the cabinet, I coated it with polyacrylic in an ultra clear matte, and I really liked it. 
For the outside, I thought I would try this Liquid Patina by Debbie's Design Diary DIY Paints, and I do like how the product applied very easily, it didn't run, and it dried very clear. The only thing that I'm not loving is the sheen that it left behind, but I can always apply another clear top coat on top of it that is a super ultra matte finish. This looks great, but I think I would prefer it to have no shine at all. For the wire panels, I used this umber metallic paint to darken them. You have to be careful not to splatter the paint everywhere, so I used a sponge brush and gently rubbed the paint over the wire. This also helped cover spots on the wire where I accidentally got paint on it. And here is the final result after many hours of hard work. I am in love with this vintage green color and I love the inside color as well. I just painted it in a simple chiffon cream so anything I display on the inside will stand out. I left the hardware original and I think that it stands out so much more instead of being on top of that flat black of the original color. And I think that it ties in really nicely with the color I painted the bed and the light fixture. The texture, character, aged look, and color are exactly what I was hoping to achieve and add to this guest room. I had intended to use this white set in the room as well and just repaint it as it was damaged a little bit during the move. However, I decided the room needed a warm wood piece, so here is a sneak peek at a secondhand find I found for the space. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that it inspires you to make over items that you already have in your own home. Maybe a piece of furniture that you just don't love anymore. You can totally recreate that piece and make it look like something completely different. Something like the things that you are inspired by on Pinterest and Instagram. And I know that the look that I showed you today is not for everybody. I have a lot of other painting tutorial videos and I'm going to have a lot more coming up in the future. So if you'd like to see those, please make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell and select the option all so you won't miss the next upload. So in the next couple of videos, I'm going to have a shopping haul for you and the reveal of this guest room makeover, totally decorated. I do have a question. Would you guys prefer to see a video where you decorate with me? Or would you prefer that I go ahead and decorate everything and just show you around the room and explain what I did and what I used and where I got it? I know everybody likes something different. If you would, just let me know in the comments below what you prefer to see. And I will be filming that video very soon. I can't wait to get this room finished up. And then after this room is finished, I'm moving on to the living room. And that is going to be a large project. We have a lot of work to do. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for your love and support. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Stay safe and stay healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. When you say you feel low and good things are hard.